So now we're going to talk about negative feedback loops, and then followed by positive feedback loops, and we'll touch base on homeostasis just to clear some things up. So negative feedback loops. You have an example here, okay? Writing three glands, the hypothalamus from the brain, the pituitary gland, and the thyroid gland. Hypothalamus releases a substance. The substance is called TRH or thyroid releasing hormone. This is just an example. That's going to act on the anterior pituitary on some other cells to release TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. And then thyroid stimulating hormone, the name thyroid stimulating is going to go stimulate the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones T4 and T3, right? So this cascade of events. So we have positive arrows and green lines, right? Positive, right? Because this is going to stimulate this. This is going to stimulate this, okay? Now, what's happening here is we need to regulate the amount of thyroid hormone because this is what's going to have an effect on the body, especially T3, to regulate our whole body's metabolism. So how do we not make sure T4 and T3 gets too high? How do we make sure T4 and T3 don't get too low? Well, we have to regulate this stuff. Well, how do we regulate these, these, these stimulations here of the thyroid gland? Well, we do that through negative feedback. So negative feedback is like a system of checks and balances. So we stimulate something to increase, but we don't want to increase too much. So how do we do, how do we control that? Right? And so TRH and TSH, they're going to lead to production of thyroid hormones. Now, how are these going to know when to say, Oh, we need more or less, or how much TRH and TSH should I be pumping out from the hypothalamic pituitary axis here to stimulate the thyroid? Well, they're going to measure the levels of T4 and T3. So T4 and T3 are actually going to, we call it negatively feedback on the hypothalamus, the pituitary. Okay, so T4 and T3 are going to negatively feed back. So we're going to put a big negative. It's going to be negative feedbacks, okay? So what is negative feedback? Well, as these are going up, just the, the presence of T4 and T3 alone are going to cause TRH and TSH to go down because they start getting it higher. We're going to have more and more negative feedback. So more and more negative feedback your TSH goes down, right? So if your hormones are fluctuating to maintain homeostasis, this is how it happens, right? T4 and T3 start going up a little bit, then we start cranking these down a little bit, right? Because there's more negative feedback. So as T4 and T3 go up, there's more negative feedback. That's how you have to think about it. There's more negative, there's always negative feedback, right? There's more negative feedback. So we're going to turn TSH down a little bit, make sure thyroid hormones don't get too high. Now, what if thyroid hormones are going too low. So these are kind of fluctuating the lower end. We want to turn our thyroid hormone up. Well, there's still negative feedback, but now we have less negative feedback. If there's less negative feedback, well then we'll crank up TRH and crank up TSH. We'll crank up the dial to stimulate the thyroid to make more T4 and T3 until they start going up a little high, too high. And then we'll have more negative feedback and we'll crank it down. So to, we use negative feedback loops to maintain homeostasis. So it's a way of depending on the amount of feedback, either, you know, cranking this dial up or down. So that's what controls the dial. Hey, how should we turn this dial up or down to make a kind of a set point, just like with like body temperature or, you know, pH, we want to maintain those things to maintain homeostasis. Well, we need to keep that as a set point, right? So it's all about this feedback. Now we call it a loop because look at this, this goes around and around. This is constantly working your whole life. As long as everything's functioning, this is a loop, right? Similar to thyroid, make thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone feeds back here. And then negatively feeds back around and around and around. So that's a negative feedback, and that's why we call it a loop because it is creating 